really wasn't even saved. Uh, you know that word good Samaritan really is an oxymoron to the Jew. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Jew didn't believe nothing good could come out of Samaria. Amen. Amen. Uh, but he called them the good Samaritan. Jesus did uh, because the act that he did was great. And I tell you, when the priest and the Levite, uh, the one that should have been in, in the midst of helping this man, uh, they walked by on the other side. Uh, it was the Samaritan that saw fit uh, to lend the hand of support uh, and do what needed to be done. Uh, can I tell you, the, us that are saved, uh, uh, our salvation uh, is not to be put on the shelf, uh, to be on display on our mantelpiece, uh, but it is meant to be an interactive thing uh, that we uh, go out into the to the world, all the world, uh, and to the highways and to the hedges uh, and make a difference. Amen. Uh, there was an old songwriter back in about 1913, uh, about a hundred years ago, uh, that penned these words. Uh, and it said, brighten the corner uh, where you are. Uh, brighten the corner where you are. Uh, someone far from harbor, you may guide across the bar. Uh, brighten the corner where you are. Uh, to those of you that weren't born a hundred years ago, Go, huh? All that is really saying is that uh, you got to be willing uh, to go and do uh, what you can do. Uh, sometimes it's just showing up and being there. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, every now and then, uh, when it ain't nobody else there, uh, that make all the difference in the world. Uh, see, Jesus supported the woman uh, by beginning to rebuke the double offer. Uh, so you got to be aware uh, that our job is to lead people through to Christ uh, through our witness. Uh, we are not uh, called by God uh, to be sent police whose job it is to round up the unsaved and lock them up and keep them away from the love of God. That's the job of Satan. The very name of Satan. One of his names is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is always bringing up your sins to anybody that will listen. Sometimes the enemy will speak to others about you and your past and call them to continually put you down instead of lifting you up. Other times the enemy will talk about you uh, to yourself uh, and keep you, up, uh, keep you wrapped up with so much self-pity and low self-esteem uh, that you won't believe that God can deliver you from that thing uh, that you need to be in. Uh, but we do need to know that God is able. Uh, God is able to bring you through. Amen. Uh, you, can do, you can make it. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, Revelation 12 and 10 says this, uh, and I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Why? Because the accuser of the brethren is cast down. They even to hell which accused the brethren before God day and night. Once Jesus began to rebuke the devil off you you can stand up and you can shake yourself and you can come to know yourself in Jesus Christ. What did Jesus do? I'm telling you right now, uh, I'm not just talking about uh, the Jesus uh, that was in the text, uh, but I'm also talking about the Jesus uh, that is in you. Uh, that same Jesus, uh, he could be able to go out uh, and, and minister to all the world, uh, a dying world, uh, that can tell them uh, that there is another way, uh, that there is a better fix, uh, that there is a support for you, uh, and there is a winning combination. Uh, see, in verse 7, uh, Jesus showed shows his support uh, for the woman uh, by doing this. Uh, he simply asked the question that uh, he that is without sin, uh, let him cast the first stone. Uh, whew, uh, that was a mouthful right there. But can I tell you it is interesting to know uh, that those that endeavor uh, uh, to use the word uh, as a baseball bat uh, against folk, uh, amen, and not shame them uh, off and use just part of the word. Uh, but they wanted to trap Jesus with the law. Uh, but Jesus decided to use the law uh, to save this woman. Uh, to see, the law said uh, the complete word uh, about, about stoning somebody was this. Uh, in Deuteronomy 17 and 7, uh, if you're going to stone somebody, if you're going to accuse them uh, and bring them before the council, well, you need to cast the first stone. But you can only cast the first stone if you don't have no sin in your life. Like that. See, you got to remember 
Amen. Uh, see, you see, they overlooked that part of the law uh, because they were not looking to fulfill the law. But I thank God that Jesus and his support of, uh, of this unsaved and, and, the, and his willingness to obey every word of the law and every word of God, it required that he preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Amen. And Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 17, did not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets, but I have come to fulfill them. And it is in the fulfillment of the law in Christ Jesus that you will find grace and mercy. Can I tell you in the law, grace and mercy is not ready to found, but if you sprinkle some Jesus uh, on every bit of ministry you do, uh, can I tell you, if you sprinkle some Jesus uh, on everything you do, uh, folk are going to see the grace in you, uh, folk are going to see the grace in God, uh, and they're going to come running, 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 uh, looking for the winning combination, amen, uh, what must I do uh, to be saved, uh, ooh, come on somebody, brother. The next thing I want to tell you uh, about this winning conversation combination is that Jesus stood with her. Amen. Come on, somebody say it with me. Stood with her. Uh, I want you to understand that it was after Jesus had spoken the truth of the gospel, of this grace and mercy, that the accusers of this woman uh, began to leave. Uh, verse 9 says, one by one, uh, they were convicted of uh, by their own conscience. Uh, and one by one, uh, from the oldest to the youngest, they left her uh, because they were convicted in their flesh, but they were not convinced in their heart. Come on, somebody. See, while they had been busy fighting the word and the ministry of Jesus, they refused to allow the word to change them. You see, if they would allow the word to change them, they would have found out too, if they had been humbled themselves and stayed, they would have found the same winning combination that would lead unto salvation. What the scribe that the Pharisees here must remember is that we have all started from the same place of sin. No matter who we are now in God, no matter we started from a place of sin, no matter the plan of God for our lives, or the purpose of God in our lives, or the power of God that rests on you now, according to Psalm 51 and 5, we were all born in sin and sin in iniquity. So lest we forget, we all all need the winning combination that is brought to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Despite our old sinful nature, we, under the Lord's power, we, under the Lord's might, we can win. We can have the winning combination. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you? Jesus is willing to overlook her. Uh, uh, he is willing to overlook that uh, if you repent uh, and you overcome that. Uh, Jesus said in Revelation 3 and 5, uh, He that overcometh uh, shall be clothed in a white raiment. Uh, I'll make you righteous. Uh, and I will not block his name out of the book of life. Uh, but I will confess his name uh, before my Father uh, and before the angels. Uh, and it's good to know uh, that Jesus is a sin. Uh, to stay with you. Jesus will go wherever you go. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he is there. David said, if I fly to the uttermost part of the earth, he is there. Somebody said, he'll go with you. He'll go with you. He'll go with you. All, all the way. You got to know that he is willing to stand, to stand by you. Now I want you to understand, amen, now that the accused, the accused and other women have fled, fled the scene, but their job is almost done. Look, they have accused her. They have left her with a bad reputation. They have left her to face the stairs and the scorn of the people. What is a girl to do in Jerusalem in a small town back then? Everybody knows your business. Amen. You can't go to the grocery store without them whispering about you. You can't stop and get your wig smoked without them talking about you. Can't get a man or a penny. Amen. 
know where to be found without them talking about you. Somebody need to go with you all the way. And I want you to know that when she looked around, everybody was gone. Wasn't nobody there but one person. And according to the rules, if you were going to stone that woman, you had to be without sin. But I look and look at Lord and Lord, who's standing right there. But there's nobody but the only son of God that knew no sin. Now, this woman had to think, what is the son of God going to do to me? It's one thing for him to have blessed folk with miracles, feeding other 5,000, healing some deformed folk, raising some dead. But I have sinned against God and man. What he going to do for me? Well, I want you to know that Jesus decided, hey, girl, I'm going to co-sign on all your mess. I know what baggage you I know what baggage you bring with you. Amen. I know where you come from. I know where you were born. I know what you're doing yesterday. I know where you're going tomorrow. I ain't worried about that thing because I'm going to stand with you. If you look at the scripture, there ain't nobody standing there but her and Jesus. And because it's just her and Jesus, I want you to know her. Whenever you think that you need a whole lot of folk around you, don't worry about a whole lot of 